Great. Can we just to summarize, which metabolites is ahi flour providing us with? So it's going to provide the richest combination of ALA, SDA, and GLA. It has about 45% ALA content, which is about 75% that of flaxseed oil. It's the richest source of stearidonic acid at about 20%. And I know that hemp also contains SDA. How yes. does that compare to the amount that's contained in ahi flour? Hemp oil contains low single digits of stearidonic acid. So ahi flour contains about eight to 10 times the stearidonic acid of hemp seed oil. And then ahi flour also has about 6% gamma linolenic acid, which is, I think, about twice the amount of GLA that is in hemp seed oil. Oh, wow. Okay. That's great to know. And so we have the ALA, we have the SDA, uh, we have the GLA. The SDA then converts to ETA, to EPA, to DPA, and then we biosynthesize DHA. So we've got all of these omega-3s covered. Then we've got Correct. DGLA, which converts to DGLA and down-regulates arachidonic acid. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, there's a preferential formation of DGLA when you give the body GLA. And so it helps to, it helps to preferentially form that versus arachidonic acid. And while arachidonic acid is absolutely important and absolutely part of the body's inflammation response and important for muscle building, the ahi flower source is going to kind of balance that better and help in the overall quest of having a less pro-inflammatory system in, in our whole phenotype. And overall, it's a four to one omega three to six ratio. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yep. It's it's four to one, both at the level of omega three to six, and it's also roughly four to one in terms of SDA and GLA. So it really is providing us all of the best of omega three with all of the best of omega six in a perfect. Yes. Way. Yes. So exciting.